Welcome to this week's episode, guys. We're heading out to our farm. We're gonna finish up some mowing today. We got one food plot left to mow, and then we're gonna be waiting for a few weeks, going back in. We're gonna time it with a good rain, and we're gonna overseed all of our fall blends with our cereal rye. We just got our shipment today. We got a cereal grain winter rye, and that's gonna be the ticket this season. We're also gonna show you guys what we did as far as edge feathering our food sources and kind of just run through some of the other projects we had on this off season. We've done a lot of work on this property and we're excited to see how this deer season turns out. Well, we just finished up mowing for the day. I'll show you a clover plot here. We're walking in the main entrance of it right now. And unfortunately, yesterday, we couldn't finish mowing this due to our uh, mower breaking down. We had a bracket for our PTO, and that bracket failed on us. But we did get back out today, got it finished. And uh, we're going to show you what we're working on, and we're going to show you how we edge feathered this whole entire food plot. And today's topic, we're going to be discussing edge feathering your food sources. So, we'll walk over here and we'll show you what we're talking about by edge feathering first. And then we'll dive on in on the topic. Alright guys, so you can see the border of this food plot. This is a clover plot here. You can see how we mowed right along this. So when we opened this food source up originally, it went way further back. It went all the way to those hardwoods right there. This whole food plot did, and all the way around this whole thing. So when we came through and we originally designed this and we dozed this out, we made this food source a lot larger than what I was planning on putting on the ground as far as food goes. And we did that for a specific reason, because we wanted to encourage herbaceous growth and create an edge around this whole food plot. It's going to create depth, cover. We've discussed this before, but today we want to go in a little more detail on how this helps your hunting and overall it just helps your wildlife in general by creating depth, cover. They're going to feel safer coming in here. They're going to be able to bed in this stuff. They're going to be able to eat this stuff. After a first couple frosts, this stuff is going to die off, unfortunately. So we won't have the screen that we have right now. I would say we'll get through most of October with this where it's really thick and lush through here but then come November, this will be gone. So the plan is for the future, is we're gonna take a few more of these hardwoods out along the edge of this. We're gonna encourage more sunlight in here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a taller edge for us. The plants are gonna get higher and it's gonna encourage more growth in general, just all the way around this. And that's gonna help the deer feel more comfortable coming into these secluded food plots. And they feel like they can stage in those areas and then come into here to feed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a line all the way around this whole food plot, just inside of this edge that we already have created with natural forage and natural native habitat. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna plant something like maybe an Egyptian wheat or some kind of screening grass that's gonna stand up to the colder temperature, to the frost, and get us further into deer season. And that way they'll still have the growth behind the screen that's gonna be for them to browse on as they're coming through, for turkeys to nest in, for rabbits, for anything to be able to use that as cover before they come into this food source. But then with the grasses, what we'll do is they're not necessarily gonna wanna walk through that tall grass when you do a screening that's really thick like that. So what I'll do is then I'll be able to mow a path through that grass on the border here and I'll be able to direct deer in a certain way. So when you're creating an edge on your property, you also wanna think about it strategically and you wanna think about how can I file these deer into this food source? And then you'll have more control. You don't have complete control, but you'll have more control on how they enter your food plots and exit. So we'll give you another look at this. Look how tall this stuff is. So guys, I'm almost six foot put my hand about where my head is. That is quite a bit taller. So the deer are gonna love coming through here. So we already have this trail 
from last season along here. It's getting overgrown. We're definitely going to have to come through here with the mower and mow that out. But just look how thick and tall that is. When they come off these hillsides and these bluffs, they're going to have all this edge here, all this cover to stage in before they come out and they actually enter this food plot here. Then they'll be able to come into this food source, feed, and then our box blind is down. They go travel through here, through that little pinch, and then we have another nice trail for them to exit. And they'll come right through there. They'll feed right in front of the blind. We have a mock scrape there. And it's really good for us doing it this way. And by us creating an edge around all of our food plots, it's enhanced my hunting. It's created more daylight movement for me. Bucks just don't feel that comfortable coming in these things when it's bare hardwoods than to a food source. The food source itself is already the open habitat that they don't feel necessarily comfortable coming in until closer to dark or after dark. So you're just trying to encourage them to come here just a little bit earlier. That way possibly you can get a shot opportunity. That's, that's the goal, guys. We're trying to set up our property so that we can take full advantage of any daylight movement and we're enhancing the chances of us being able to harvest a mature buck. You couple that with easy access, high odd stands, low pressure, hunting the right wind directions, you know, staying out of here until the time is right. It's just, it's a recipe for success. And we feel like we're gonna have a really good season in this food source. So we'll show you down here on this end. We just sprayed this with plot boost today. We got our radish and turnips coming up. So take a look at this. So come through this little trail we were talking about. And the other week when we were talking about this food plot and coming in and seeding it, everything's already germinated, it's coming up, looks awesome. So in about two weeks from now, we're gonna come back through here with our cereal grain, our winter rye, and we're gonna top seed this food plot with winter rye so we have a food source that goes later into the season and then we're also going to be top seeding all of our clover out there with cereal rye as well and what that's going to do is it's going to suppress weeds for the upcoming growing season and it's also going to give us a nice late food source that we're going to be able to hunt over this season so guys i hope this helps i hope this makes sense to you creating edge creating depth cover Deer need cover. They don't like to travel through open area. So anytime you have a maximum amount of cover and then you add a food source nearby, that's the ticket right there. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode, guys. We'll be back next weekend.